The city of St. Louis takes considerable pride in beautiful Bush Memorial Stadium, a big, bright, modern sports arena situated on the Mississippi River in downtown St. Louis. More importantly, it has pennant-winning baseball and division-leading football teams to play in it. Today, the Cardinals must keep pace with the Cleveland Browns, who are tied with them for first place in the Century Division. To do this, they must defeat a Pittsburgh Steelers team that has rebounded from a disastrous 0-6 start to win its last two games. The Cardinals' defense, long known for their reckless, blitzing style of play, has, through trades and retirement, undergone almost a complete overhaul. It is still led by number eight, safety Larry Wilson, but now features a rarity in the NFL, a rookie at the most vital defensive position, middle linebacker. This unusual young man's name is Jamie Rivers. To stop Pittsburgh, he and his defensive counterparts must cope with the reborn Steeler offense. I'm Jack Whitaker, and this is the NFL Game of the Week. On the game's first play, number 79, right end Chuck Walker, fought off a block of John Brown and with help from his teammates, wrestled Dick Shiner for a seven yard loss. It could have been an ominous note for Pittsburgh, but actually, it would be one of the few times that the Cardinal defense would assert itself in the first half. Shiner crossed up St. Louis with a perfect call, a draw to number 42, Dick Hoke, who sailed through the Cardinal line untouched until Larry Wilson got him 18 yards later. Shiner, not reluctant to go right to Hoke again, flipped a screen to him, and he rambled 17 yards, past his blockers, and into number 53, rookie sensation Jamie Rivers. <laughs> number 38, 220-pound Earl Groh is the other setback for Pittsburgh, and he sliced for nine additional yards as the Steelers moved almost effortlessly against the Cardinal defense. Then Shiner spiraled a pass to John Hilton, his 6-5 tight end for the third Pittsburgh first down of this opening drive. Continuing to go with the short passes, Shiner behind excellent pass blocking from his front line, swung this pass to Hoke, who took it all the way. 30 yards for a touchdown. Another look at the play shows Pittsburgh also received some excellent downfield blocking as Cardinal defenders tumble like ten pins around the spinning Hoke. Pittsburgh had gone 73 yards for a 7-0 lead. Another new star for St. Louis is number 26, Chuck Latourette, who in his last game averaged 43 yards returning kickoffs. His long returns have proven decisive in several games this season. He was within one man of going all the way on this one. Their first play was to be portentous for St. Louis as Jim Hart slipped and then underthrew his receiver. The young quarterback's inconsistency would plague St. Louis the entire first half. Halfback Roy Shivers, number 27, took this pitch out around left end for a 13-yard gain and the Cardinals' first first down of the game. A look at that play from the top shows that St. Louis lined up in an I formation. Then Shivers switched to the right flank with the regular flanker Conrad moving in tight on the line. Hart faked to Willis Crenshaw, then flipped to Shivers on a new version of an end around for the successful game. Despite the trickery, the Cardinal offense couldn't overcome Hart's erratic passing. and were forced to punt. Late in the first quarter, they had another chance with the ball. 
and seemed to be moving well behind the running of their massive 230-pound fullback, Crenshaw. Crenshaw, the card's leading rusher, along with Shivers, has taken up the slack caused when Johnny Rowland failed to return to form following knee surgery. On a third down possession play, Hart finally hit his target. But Bobby Joe Conrad dropped the ball, and Latteret had to punt from his own 33. The kick went 47 yards to Roy Jefferson on his 20, who, due to tight pass coverage, touched the ball for the first time today. He made the most of his chance. Eighty yards, a phenomenal run back, and a surprising two touchdown Steeler lead. Unfortunately, the Steelers had to kick off and they did it to the wrong man, or right one, depending upon your allegiance. As Latterette, as if not to be outdone, again went into his act, and again was within one man of taking it the length of the field. The quarter ended with the Cardinals in excellent field position, but the score reading Pittsburgh 14, St. Louis nothing. Hart opened the second period with another perfect pass into the hands and out again of Conrad. Then he tried number 81, reliable tight end Jackie Smith, but the results were the same. With third and long yardage, the frustrated Hart resorted to a run, but number 34, Andy Russell, and number 44, Bob Wade, ruined this strategy. Pittsburgh went right to work and burned St. Louis on their patented halfback option pass. Hoke to number 86, J.R. Wilburn, for 39 yards. As he did so well in the first period, Shiner used his back successfully as receivers. Earl Groh is on the end of this one. Then he returned to his ends and hit Wilburn at the right sideline. Wilburn thought he had a score, but stepped out of bounds at the Cardinal 22. Jefferson had been double covered all day, and this play was no exception. Number 42, Lonnie Sanders applied back-breaking pressure. So Shiner returned to his setbacks as receivers, and Earl Groh took it over the middle and into the end zone for the third Pittsburgh touchdown and a whopping 21-0 lead. Latterette, whose returns were the only offense St. Louis had shown so far, took the kick off again, but despite a long leap, wasn't able to break away this time. It looked as if Hart's luck remained the same as number 20, Paul Martha, took a tip pass and rambled down the sideline. But Pittsburgh was called for defensive holding, and St. Louis retained possession. This time, both Hart and a receiver were able to get together, as he combined with Jackie Smith on successive plays of 11 and 12 yards and two first downs. Despite being a tight end, the mammoth but quick Smith has averaged more yards per pass than the wide Cardinal receivers.
Number 23, Johnny Rowland, managed five yards around right end. And then Hart received his second break of the series when number 69, linebacker Jerry Hillebrand, a former Cardinal, dropped a certain interception with a clear field ahead. With fourth and five from the 38, Jim Bakken lined up for a field goal attempt. But holder Larry Wilson, on a play he executes like no one else, took off around the right side and made the fake work for 12 yards and a first down. The Cardinals continue to deceive the Pittsburgh defense with this end around by Smith, good for seven yards. Then Hart employed Smith again in a more conventional manner, with a pass good for six, and the Cardinals continued to move goalward. Hart led Crenshaw perfectly with this pass, and he fumbled when hit by Wade. The cards retained possession since the ball was fumbled out of bounds. On one of the decisive calls of the game, Pittsburgh's four-yard line, fourth down and one to go, the Cardinals disdained the field goal, but Shivers was driven back for a four-yard loss and Pittsburgh took over. The Steelers were unable to move, but when punter Walden dropped the snap, it resulted in another close-range opportunity for St. Louis. But Hart, pressured by Parker, was intercepted in the end zone by Hillebrand. And the first half ended with the Steelers shutting out St. Louis's patented offense, 21 to nothing. Steeler coach Bill Austin says the secret of coaching is not to get the best players, but to get the best out of what you've got. For the past 10 quarters, Austin has certainly gotten that from his Steelers. The Cardinals literally opened the second half with a bomb. Shut out for 30 minutes, it took exactly one play for them to score. When number 80, smooth striding Dave Williams took a pass on the dead run, and cantered into the end zone for the Cards' first score. The next time they got the ball, St. Louis again showed signs of life and more. Hart had to completely abandon his ground game, and his passing attack started to gel. Working on both the Steeler cornerbacks, Hart first hit Williams for 16, and a quick out to Conrad put the ball on the Steeler 14. Then Hart faked the throw to a setback, Willis Crenshaw, and went for the end zone. Incomplete, right? Wrong. Touchdown, Dave Williams, who snuck behind everyone for the score. The second heart to Williams connection in five minutes had narrowed the score to 21-14. St. Louis held and incredibly was now trying to tie the game. Hart and Williams tried again, but their luck did not run in threes. On the last play, number 60, Ben McGee's hard rush forced Hart to release a little quicker than he might have liked and his pass just trickled off the outstretched hand of his great young receiver. Williams and his defender, Woodson, then discussed the weather and the election results on their way back. On a third down play, defensive end Lloyd Voss broke through to blindside Hart and forced a cardinal punt. On the last Cardinals series, the Steelers' defense had showed some of their first-half fury, and Dick Shiner now showed some of his first-half accuracy. Mm -hmm. 
cornerback Lonnie Sanders had shut out receiver Roy Jefferson in the first half with tight coverage. Now he was giving the speedy flanker the outside while guarding against the bomb. It turned out to be smart strategy because in the very next play, Shiner sent one deep to Jefferson, but Sanders was right there. Sanders was acquired for Pat Fisher and up to now was enjoying his best game of the season. Sanders' defensive play forced a field goal attempt by AFL cast-off Booth Lustig. The kick was off to the left, and the cards took over. To St. Louis coach Charlie Winner, a game is won or lost on what he calls cheap touchdowns, those over 30 yards. Well, this could be his cheapest game in a long time, as the second bomb and third touchdown pass in the quarter made it a 21-21 tie. In an aerial circus unmatched by Barnum and Bailey, Steelers quarterback Dick Shiner should not be slighted. He hit on 18 of 28 for 260 yards and three touchdowns, many of them short flips to his setbacks, Grow and Hope. But when he needed the long strike, he was also successful. Cornerback Sanders gambled for an interception, and his only mistake of the day cost a touchdown, as Jefferson's 52-yard catch and run put Pittsburgh ahead by seven at the end of the quarter, 28 to 21. The cards had dominated the third quarter, but the Steelers were hanging on for dear life, as Dick Shiner had moved the team well for the last two weeks. On the last play, a perfectly executed slant in to J.R. Wilburn set up a third and four situation. But good coverage by Sanders on Jefferson on a pass thrown behind the receiver forced a field goal attempt from the 41. Lustig's second attempt of the game again was wide. Pittsburgh was badly hurt by poor place kicking today. The next eight minutes saw no scoring and was a period in which neither team could sustain a drive. The Cardinal defense, barked by the individual play of number 79, Chuck Walker, was able to bring the Steeler ground game to a complete halt, allowing only 20 yards in the second half, while their linebackers and secondary blanketed the Steeler receivers on both short and long patterns. The St. Louis defense is a success story in itself, with four new men starting along with two rookies, Jamie Rivers and number 48, Bob Atkins, who made this great save to stop a touchdown. The Steelers secondary also played well for most of the quarter, considering their task covering one of the best sets of receivers in football. Number 47, cornerback Marv Woodson was beaten often by Dave Williams, but here hung right on to save six points. And pressure from the Steeler front four caused Hart to overthrow his receivers on key third down plays. But with five minutes left, St. Louis started a drive that seemed to be destined for the end zone. A superb play-action fake to Crenshaw froze the defense, and tight end Jackie Smith was wide open in the middle for 24 yards. Smith, along with John Mackey of the Colts, is the prototype of the superior tight end. He has great hands and moves, and when he gets the ball, has the ability to drag a tackler with him for the extra yards needed 
on key third down plays. Here, he beat strong safety Glendon Thomas, and Hart led him perfectly for a 52-yard explosion to the Steelers' six. But number 34, Andy Russell, clogged up a hole in the middle to stop Crenshaw on first down. On second and goal from the five, Hart avoided a rush, but his pass was broken up in the end zone. Hart then called for a quick out to Williams in the left corner of the end zone. Williams, a great leaper, had the ball, but squeezed too hard, and an extremely fortunate Marv Woodson ended up with an interception to stop the drive with three and a half minutes to play, and the Steelers still ahead by seven. Shiner would try to run out the clock on the ground, but his first play resulted in a three-yard loss. But on the play, the Cards suffered a greater loss when Jerry Stovall, the tackler, got his cleats caught and suffered a severe leg injury. Stovall's facial expression shows how agonizing a leg injury can be. This is the type of injury that put Gail Sayers and many others out for the season and is the quickest way to a short season and a long vacation. But the Cardinals' fort has been their ability to weather key injuries without letting down. Stovall's loss seemed to make the defense more aggressive as Don Brum smothered Shiner on a third down to force a punting situation. On the replay, watch for Brum at the top left to fight off his block and jolt Shiner to the ground. Brum's third down tackle gave the Cards one last chance with less than two minutes to play from the 47. But Hart had to eat the ball on his first attempt. The Steelers were giving up the medium range passes to prevent the long one. So Hart calmly hit Williams for 11, but was seven yards shy of a first down. After an incompletion, it was fourth and seven. Hart spotted number 40, Bobby Joe Conrad, who had done a down and out, and fired a rope right into his hands. Good for 27 yards and the biggest play of the day. Conrad's story is a heartwarming one. Two weeks ago, he claimed his quarterback was intentionally avoiding him. Today, they were definitely on more amiable terms. With a first down at the 17, Hart called a play that earlier had resulted in an interception. This time, Williams had a step on Woodson, but Hart's pass was overthrown. 50 seconds left. First Williams down and out, and now Williams down and in on a quick post. The ball was there, Williams was there, and so was Woodson. But a little too early. Woodson can't be blamed too heavily. Stopping a receiver like Williams with single coverage is almost futile. The interference call, a close one, put the ball on the one. From here, Johnny Rowland followed his fullback, Willis Crenshaw, and banged into the end zone for the tying touchdown. The Cardinals, hopelessly outclassed for 30 minutes, had to rally twice in the last half to tie the revitalized Pittsburgh Steelers, and their defense preserved the tie for the final 40 seconds as the game ended 28 to 28. It is said that a tie is closely related to kissing one sibling. If that is so, Cardinal coach Charlie Winner might well have wished that he had a good looking sister or he would have gladly indulged her with a kiss today. Not only did his team stage a miraculous comeback, but more importantly, a tie leaves the cards even with the Browns in the loss column. Doesn't really hurt them at all and makes it more certain that their final confrontation with Cleveland in their last game of the season will provide the answer as to who will be the winner of the Century Division of the Eastern Conference. <laughs>